It's Friday, yay, the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm here, welcome everyone. It's so wonderful to be here with you guys today. Friday, what is it, January 10th, January 10th of 2020 already. And I wanted to make this show for you today because I wanted to talk about the, the eclipse that we're in and all of this emotion that may be coming up for people right now, especially as we're going you know deeper into 2020 and what are some of the top things that we can do to stay in our empowerment and to stay um, on track so that we don't give our power away. A lot of what's happening when we get triggered emotionally is happening so that we can clear the past, that we can really let go of what triggers us, right? And um, some of the ways that that may be playing out is you get to a point where you're just so stinking fed up, where you're just fed up and you never want to feel that way again. And sometimes these emotional triggers, they can, they can really press those buttons so that that deep core yearning, that, that feeling, your voice, your authentic voice that, that says to you, I never want to feel this way again. I'm so tired of feeling like this. I'm tired of feeling drained and emotionally exhausted. You know, a lot of people are, are feeling really vulnerable and exposed. And this may be showing up in your dream state to where you're having, you know, dreams of being exposed or like what happened to me when I had a dream that I was on the cover of my book and I was naked on the cover. And I, I, I it was so funny because... You know, I was like, oh, my God, who pulled the trigger on this? Who did this? You know, I'm, I'm looking at the, the publishing company and I'm talking to everybody. and I'm going, who did this? Who did this? And then I like to interpret my dreams. You know, I write them down. I like to interpret them. And then I realized, ah, it's because being so open, being so vulnerable, you know, sharing your authentic heart, talking about your feelings, what's important to you is, is really important. And because you're, you're validating yourself, you're, you're honoring yourself. And sometimes, you know, we get so pushed where everything is coming up at one time. And right now there's a lot of changes happening on this planet. So in order to, you know, make it easier for people, because I've already done so much emotional work on myself and then with with people that I work with my clients and people that work with me that I wanted to make this show and I wanted to you know have this conversation like what is it some of the things that we can do and to help me uh, talk about this I have my really good friend from transformation talk radio Jessica here with me hi Jessica hello I'm happy to be here I'm so glad that you said yes to just, you know, bantering this out because a lot of people, you know, are feeling, are feeling that, that push, that emotional, that emotional push. And, and there is just, um, this is calling us to really unhook. Like I, I like to say is not to get hooked, but to unhook from uh, the control matrix old matrix paradigm where it was there was a you know a winner and a loser in that paradigm and we have to unhook from that paradigm and come into the win-win the win-win paradigm and that is what it is that we're creating and you know for ourselves and each other so thanks Jess for being here Thank you. I have a question for you on that because I think, and I'm speaking from my own personal experience, like the last couple weeks is there's a lot of things that come up in a good way too. I think there's things that come up, like things that you set in motion that you were passionate about, like 
extra passionate about it. Like, how do we get it done? Right. And then there's also things that are all over the place, but I feel, and I'm only noticing this because I'm starting to pay more attention and I'm learning from you and I'm learning from other hosts on the network, like what's going on with moon cycles and how this affects people. And I think there's a lot of people out there though, who are probably going through some sort of something and the first step is probably just recognizing that there's something else bigger happening that's affecting you. Wouldn't you say that? I mean, you have to just realize that there is something else at play and then you can start to take the steps. Cause if you don't know, then you're just oblivious and you're like, what's wrong with me? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, like a lot of the astrologers are talking about, they can actually pick right now and they can show, you know, how many, um, what's happening right now in the evolution on this planet, what's happening astrological wise and how these kinds of things happened like, you know, many years ago at different points when there was big revolutionary changes happening for the planet. And basically that is what's happening because we're all being called right now to fully step into our power, our inner power, our inner authority, and not give our power away to outside sources, you know? So that's really what's going on on a big, on a big scale it's happening. And with all the structures and things, you know, out there that are shifting and changing. And one of the big uh, changes we can kind of point fingers to right now, and that's, you know, the whole uh, thing with Prince Harry and Meghan from the royal family, how they are, they are choosing to leave the, the royal family and you know, and maybe, and I think they're, they're choosing to live in, in both places, in England and also America, but they're looking to be financially independent. And they're looking to go away from the old structures of the way that, it, that we were conditioned before based on our conditioning, right? And so that's a lot of the things that's unraveling. All those, all those things are, are coming up to the surface so that we can choose and claim our power. And one of the things I wanted to, you know, remind everybody of is that we're not victims. And as you know, the work that I do, Jessica, is I champion humanity's sovereignty, the authority over one's own life as empowered creators. But in order to be able to do that, we have to really have made peace with our past. And we have to come from a place of not from a place of attack and projecting and pointing the finger out, but really looking at from within, who am I? What do I stand for in the world? And what are my core values? What are my core values? So those are the questions that I would uh, invite you, the listener, the audience, anyone to, that's where they can begin, right? They can begin on uh, healing that inner child. How do you, and this might seem like a really basic question, but how do you, wh- what do you do if you can't answer those questions? What do you, if you, what do you do if you find yourself stuck in even answering those questions? Well, that's really good. You know, cause you know, I, I do, I do have people that say, you know, when I, when I recommend that they begin journaling, this is one of the things, you know, I'm a, I'm a journal ho- a journal holic is that I journal all the time. And that's really how I was able to get to know myself is through journaling. I put everything on the pages. I meet my consciousness, whatever it is with the pages. And so the first place I would uh, recommend is for people to take it to the pages, take it to the journal. Who am I? Um, that would be that would be one way to maybe get a coach, maybe get uh, have somebody a coach or a therapist, somebody that that you can work with, you know, that can get you started at least, so you can begin. Because at first it's kind of weird because you don't trust yourself, you don't trust what's coming out, and you feel bad about what's in there, like some of the negative thoughts. I don't feel worthy. I don't feel good enough. Uh, I'm, you know, whatever the conditioning was that has not received your love, that right. hasn't received the love. And I know that Zach, you have um, a link that I want to share with the audience that is the 21 day challenge. So I created this 21 day challenge for any person that is ready to get really intimate with 
um, those parts of themselves. It's an, it's an audio course and it's 21 days and it's about 10 minutes per day. And it's a guided uh, meditation, reflection, journaling that I take you through so that you can begin to really answer some of those questions about, um, you know, where you are in your life right now. Because basically, if you are thinking negative thoughts and you're feeling negative feelings, you know, that that's the part that needs to be addressed first. So the the 21 day challenge that I created is a perfect tool. It's $21. I mean, and the thing about it is, it's a lifetime process because, you know, it's like peeling the onion. You go through it and then you release and you let go. And then you can take it again, maybe in about six months and go through it again. So it's a wonderful process to really help people uh, rewrite the story of their life. Because the story that, that you were born into is not the story that you need to tell today. Isn't that interesting? Something you said is really interesting to me because you can go back to it again. Because I was just thinking about that. Like if I were to ask myself those questions 10 years ago, I would have very different answers than I have today. And I mean, and that's a 10 year span, but like a six month period, like because if you're growing and evolving and changing and who you are and what you believe and what you want in your life changes all the time. And I think probably if you find your thing to do it, if it's the 21 day challenge and you go through that, it's kind of like doing a cleanse kind of, it's like doing a spiritual cleanse, right? Like people do cleanses all the time, yeah, like smoothies or whatever else they do. So it's kind of the same idea is that you do a cleanse, you figure out who you are, what you want, what you want in your life, and then you can kind of breathe and then you make your intentions and you go for it. And then, yeah, six months down the road, you might need to do that again or a year down the road, you might need to do that again. And that makes perfect sense to me why you would need something like that. you got to find the something that's going to keep you going and keep you on your toes kind of and being your best self all the time. That's it. And the bottom line is, is that everybody is being invited right now by, you know, the evolution of what's going on is to really find out what your spiritual values are. What are your spiritual values? What is it that you believe in? What is, what's the definition of you? What is the definition of, of, of God? What is the definition of source? Whatever your spiritual beliefs are, but you're being asked to have a spiritual foundation that's solid. What is the meaning of home? What is the meaning of home? If you don't know what home means to you, then, you know, that's exactly the perfect opportunity to find out. The 21 day challenge asks all those questions of you because it's the process I went through myself and everything that I personally have found over the last, uh, since 2008, when I really began my journey of discovery. Who am I? What are my spiritual core values? What is it that I stand for in the world? And, you know, even when I look back, and I, I remember back in 2013, I remember sitting in my morning meditation. One tear is, is rolling down my face. And the tear was about, I couldn't believe that I used to have a thought that was an attached to an emotional core wound that I was not worthy, that I wasn't good enough and that I used to make choices that reflected that belief in my daily life. And so the 21 day challenge helps you get to the place of I am love. I am confident. I am whole. I am worthy, I am abundant, because you want to be able to have that in your core, in your core, you know, you want to feel that you want to you want to live that and you want to be that. But if you're still projecting out, they, they pointing fingers, right, if you're po pointing the fingers out, um, you're not you're not doing the work, it leaves the person a victim. And that is another part of the whole paradigm shift that's taking place is there are no victims. We don't need to act like victims because we are empowered creators. We're here to change the world. There's plenty of tools and resources available. 
find and get support. Do whatever it is that you can do to get your inner Gandhi on. <laughs> I mean, you know, and find out what your spiritual core values are and make sure that you remember that you are the most beautiful, brilliant, amazing being that is here making a difference and, uh, and, and creating a ripple effect on this planet. I know that there's some people that are going to hear you say that and they're not in the space yet that they can believe that they can truly feel that way about themselves. But I have to say from my own experience, it, and I'm sure you would agree with this, it is because that's why people like you are here trying to say, look, it is possible because I've been there. I've been in that other place. And it is possible to get to a place where you are living and you are being all of those things you just said. It's different than just saying an affirmation. It's being the affirmation. And that's why it takes a practice. You know, it's not just done overnight or just right. by me trying to sell you a, a dream or, you know, trying to inspire you. No, because every person is here to save themselves. And the only way that you can save yourself and, 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 you know, really be your own inner parent, your own inner guru is through the experience that you rise up into. And I mean, if a person like me that has overcome suicide, that has overcome self-hatred, that has overcome so many different things in my life can now come from a place of I am. When, when you, when a person like me, anything is possible. And that's the thing, you know, that's the thing. And I want to tell everyone out there today is that you came here to experience and live your best life. And your best life uh, is what you deserve. But it begins with a choice, with every choice you make. And don't let another year go by. Don't let any more, you know, time pass you by without really taking action so that you can discover your true self, the unveiling of the true self, right? And so anybody uh, can begin this process. You can, um, like I said, grab a coach, find yourself a coach, find yourself a mentor. You can reach out to me at radio at corneliastephanie.com. You can um, even, uh, you know, ask me for other people and I can refer other people to you. So there is plenty of support available to you. And I, wanna, um, I wanted to, again, make the link available for anybody that wants to take the 21 day challenge in the comfort of your own home. It's $21. Jessica, you rock. Thank you so much for being here with me. What I want to do now is I want to, uh, behind this show right here, I want to put a, an interview uh, that I did with uh, a Dr. V, who is a cancer doctor. She interviewed me, and this is where I talk about some of the emotional core work. And I think this is really important. And if you want to do some emotional processing, you can also go to my website at corneliastephanie.com. And there's a, a, there's a link where you can get the free tools that are available. So I just want to say cheers to, you know, here's to our success. Thank you, Jessica, for being here. And thanks, everybody, for listening and tuning in. And we'll see you again next time. Hi, my name is Dana Terrio, and I would like to speak to my very personal deeply connected experience with uh, the amazing one and only Cornelia Stephanie. Cornelia has shepherded me, has invited me, has held my hand in this process of becoming an accidental entrepreneur. <laughs> of course, it was written in the stars. It was bound to happen. But Cornelia really saw something in me when I didn't um, believe in myself or think that I was ready. And she was so kind, is so kind and generous to take me under her wing and really cradle me. I honestly feel cradled and covered by her. And I love the new business of collaboration with women because she has spoken to me about making sure and delivering my message with women because I just, I have such a love affair with women empowering women cornelia really shows me what it means and she drills down telling me that 
even if I only re reach one person or to an audience of 10, that gives me the courage to move forward and really just move with exactly where I am right now at this juncture. And I wouldn't be here were it not for our lady Cornelia. So Cornelia, I just have the just immense gratitude. I have an ocean of love and gratitude for you. Thanks. Welcome to another wonderful episode of Wellness Warriors. I'm Dr. V, your hostess with the mostess. And today I've got Cornelia Stephanie. Is that correct? Stephanie, is that how I pronounce it? Yes. So great to have you, Cornelia. Cornelia, I met you through an introduction with Dana, who was one of our clients. And you hosted us on your uh, talk show, your radio show. And that's how we made the connection. But I wanted you to get on our podcast because you have such a great story. And like most people, you know, our pain becomes our passion. And I know that, you know, you teach women to become the authority in all areas of their lives. You teach them to empower themselves, to heal their lives in all aspects, to host retreats. Um, you have private sessions, you have an online membership. So you're a mover and a shaker when it comes to being able to support women and help them to really own their, their power. So tell us how you got started in this work. What was the incentive to do it and, and what you're doing today? Well, it was really interesting. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on. It was, it was, it's been an interesting journey walking this uh, journey of awakening awakening to remember, you know, our truth, to remember our power, to remember who it is that we are. So initially, when I left the corporate world, I left there because I wanted to go out and be a motivational speaker, and I wanted to travel the world. And what ended up happening is I ended up getting certified in, um, you know, the law of attraction and passion and coaching. And, and pretty much that was the beginning of it. When then there was a greater, deeper call from my soul, and my soul was saying that I want my own work. I want my own stuff. I want to talk about what I know. I want to teach and talk about what I know. And that, that was that, that, inner call that was coming that said, I want my own work. And I didn't know what that entailed that at the time. That was back in 2010, when I really started diving into emotional processing, the emotional core wounding. And I'm one of those kind of people that I learn through experience. And that's really what I teach others too, is that in order to be the authority in your own life, you really have to, you really have to go and trust and look within and ask yourself what your vision is, what your ideas are, what, what it is that you believe, what it is that you know. And through, you know, I heard you say our pain is our passion. I was... Uh, at that time, I was experiencing, I was in an experience where I was with a friend of mine who betrayed me. And through that betrayal, which is an, a, an emotional core wound, betrayal, feeling betrayed, feeling betrayed by, you know, our friends, feeling betrayed by a partner, feeling betrayed by uh, a business partner feeling betrayed by life, feeling betrayed by God, feeling betrayed by source. I mean, you can track it to wherever your level of consciousness is at that time and, uh, you know, bring that into, you know, the present moment. And so that was what, what, where it started. So it started with the emotional core wound of betrayal in the emotional core work. And when I first, when that first happened, the, the betrayal wound was in my root. I couldn't sit down for two weeks. I, I really could not sit on a chair for two weeks because I was in so much pain of that betrayal. It was in the root. And so just learning and trusting that this emotional work was, uh, you know, there was a reason for this. And so then really diving in and what does all of this mean? And so that's when I discovered that my body wants to heal the suppression that I had had from this life and other lifetimes of where this was suppressed in my physicality. And now is the time 
my motto is feel to heal is when the body is giving you messages it's knocking on the door to get your attention so that you can bring love awareness and consciousness to an area that has never seen the light of day so pretty much that's how it started it was the emotional core wound of betrayal and once i once i cleared that and moved and released that and healed that and loved that uh the next wound came and again it was through experience you feeling, know it's like peeling the onion right one layer yeah. at a time yeah and then the next wound came and the next wound was abandonment the next emotional core wound was abandonment and so how did it play out it played out by one of my really close close friends when, when we get triggered, it usually only happens when we are attached and we, we have a lot of meaning in this relationship. And then suddenly I felt abandoned by my friend and who was there before and all of a sudden now she's not. And now I was feeling really abandoned in our friendship. And so that's when I was able to go in and look at what, how tracking this abandonment back to my uh, childhood. So where my, I felt abandoned by my father, I felt abandoned by my mother. I, I was able to, uh, you know, look at all of that and heal that. And then the way that I healed that is through feeling it, feeling really what it feels like to be abandoned. And then realizing that um, I'm not abandoning myself today, that this is the part that, you know, I am fully committed and I will never abandon myself again because that mimicking reality was showing itself to me so that I can pay attention to me and not abandon myself anymore, not betray myself, not abandon myself. And then, so those were, the, that was the second core wound. And then, you know, then more came and then it was like, well, how many of these damn core wounds are there? <laughs> Goodness gracious, you know, how many, how many are there? So then there was, uh, not worthy, not good enough, you know, not good enough. There was shame. There was shame. And then there was a uh, victim being, feeling a victim. And then there was uh, separation, the feeling, the separation from our creator, from source, from God, whatever your, whatever your uh, faith is. And so once I discovered that there was really um, a little more than a handful of these emotional core wounding, I discovered that in order for me to heal my life, and heal my body and heal myself, I now need to bring in the opposites of these wounds. So what is the opposite of betrayal? The opposite of betrayal is trust. So really to be able to trust myself, to trust life, to trust God, to trust source, is that is the opposite that this body now wants to feel. That's this being now wants to experience. And the only way that can be done is through applying it, right? We have to practice it. We have to live it. We have to be the trust that we want to see in the world. So, the, you know, that, that's basically how my work began is um, discovering the emotional core wounds, realizing that there's an opposite to it because we live on a planet of duality and realizing there's an opposite to it and now bringing in the opposite of where once the body and the being was in so much pain is now living um, and being the opposite but through all of that it was a lot of pain it was a lot to feel it was a lot of dark nights of the soul it was a lot of you know bleeding um bleeding my heart you know having my heart broken open and feeling all of these things that had been suppressed in my body for a long time and after after going through and discovering the emotional core wounds then i wanted to um you know i asked my, asked the creator asked god asked source what do you want me to do with all of this information and then i wrote a book called peace the flip side to anger how i healed my uh, life my body with the power of my emotions and how you can too and that book is available on Amazon. And I, I talk about my journey in there and uh, how, how, I, how I found peace. Because, you know, we're looking at the world today and so many people, um, you, you know the power of anger in the body. And I don't know anybody on this planet that isn't angry about something, mm -hmm. you know, that isn't angry. And if we use anger as, 
as fuel and as uh, a, 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 a transmutational tool. If we use that, that emotion for that instead of using it to cause war, using anger to, uh, to uh, hurt someone or harm someone. But if we can look at the anger within our own being when we get triggered by something, what is underneath that anger, there is a truth that's waiting to be told, a powerlessness that we felt, and that's the reason why we're angry. We may not know how to communicate, we may not know how to say this to you, but I'm angry about this. And, and when we can learn to use anger as a tool, and how to how to how to heal and clear ourselves that is um that's where the gift comes and that's when we're really fully in charge of using uh, our emotions to heal our life which we all have the ability to do because we all have them what a great story and uh your story and your you know your whole philosophy just parallels so much you know essential number four is to heal your emotional wounds and i've taught you know, our community that, you know, you have to, you know, cancer is a message of love. It's, you know, telling you to pay attention to your life and pay attention to the wounds. And I know personally, when I went through my healing journeys, uh, there was a lot of pain, a lot of childhood pain to uncover and to release and to heal. Um, and, you know, betrayal. I mean, that that is such a big one because, women who are diagnosed with breast cancer, I know I felt that way, often feel very betrayed by their body because like, how could this happen to me? I thought I was doing everything right. You know, I hear that story so many times, Help, you know, so-called healthy women who are conscious of their, their health and their habits, you know, end up developing breast cancer. But it's, you know, it's a tap on the shoulder that, you know, you've got to pay attention to, to what your body's telling you. So what a, what a great story. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So how did, um, how did you start healing your body? So you said, you know, you went from betrayal to trust. Uh, was there a specific modalities or was there a prayer or, you know, what did you use to heal that? I know I used a lot of EFT in my healing, um, a lot of journaling, a lot of meditation, visualization. What did, what did you do? So um, this was back in, I don't know, I'm having some background noise. I can't hear, my, can you hear that? No, I don't hear any noise. Okay, okay, that was weird. Um, so the way, that, the way that I healed myself is through uh, journaling and through like when I, whenever I will, will feel the emotion, the healing modalities, I would, I would, use the modality that's within me so i would feel the emotion the trigger and then i would use a a, a a thought process that's also available on my website that anybody can use and basically what is this about for me how does this make me feel what does this bring up for me what am i releasing and letting go of from the past so bringing the the mental body in in communion with the, the emotional body and you know processing that out and i discovered through the journaling and through doing this this inner dialogue that uh it usually takes about 24 to 48 hours to let that emotion really move through and i would dive into the emotion i would this is i think a huge problem that that we we've had and that is we don't want to feel the pain exactly <laughs> We, we don't, don't want to feel, feel the pain. <laughs> we don't want to feel it because it's it's too overwhelming. And yeah. one one of the the ways that I did it is I would literally dive in to feel it because the belief was the knowing was feeling is healing, and so no matter what the pain is, is is allowing myself to go in there and feel it. And that was really painful. It was hard but it doesn't last a long time if you really go in and allow yourself to really feel it that that and most of you know this work this was back in 2011 2012 during that time and this was cutting edge at that time you know everybody's doing it now today uh, but back then this was all intuitive guidance trusting my intuitive guidance trusting and again what's the opposite of betrayal is trust and at this time, you know, I'm life coaching, I'm coaching myself, I'm coaching and I teach other people how to self heal, how to self coach. But 
um, life coaching myself. I'm, I'm, I'm using this practice now to give it to others to help them and it's working, right? And at that time I had, I had two cysts on my ovaries and, and uh, being a, 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 an entrepreneur, I didn't at that time have health insurance. I didn't have medical. I didn't have any of these things because I'm just in the middle of discovering this work and trying to make a living at the same time was really, uh, you know, it was challenging because it's, you're, it's a full-time job to heal yourself. I mean, right. really, it is a full-time job. And to make that a priority, that was the priority. It's more, it was more of a priority to me than chasing money or chasing after any material things because my, my, my value my, my, my worth, my life was so important. I overcame suicide as well because I was a suicidal soul. I've always wanted to prior to 20 years ago, uh, you know, commit suicide. I've taken many actions towards doing that. And that has also been healed because I know that there's no way um, that I would ever, ever have that again because it's really been healed at the core. But going back to my ovaries, when I had the, the cysts there, I went to have an ultrasound done and they told me now that they wanted to take, you know, my entire, give me a hysterectomy and have everything removed. And they also were afraid that I would possibly have, you know, a, a candidate for endometrial cancer. And um, I, when I had the ultrasound done, I came home and I called a friend and I told her, uh, what, what the doctor said. And she goes, well, Cornelia, I guess now it's time to really walk your talk. Oh, <laughs> bam. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, well, I guess now it's really time to walk your talk. Mm. You're, you're talking about your emotions and your beliefs <laughs> and that you can feel yourself. And now, you know, like that. And then she said this to me and I, it was so perfect. And I said, it really is time for me to walk my talk. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heal this. And so then I called the doctor and I said, I canceled my appointment with cancer. I informed my body. I canceled my appointment with cancer. I, I'm not having this. I'm going to heal this. I'm not having, I'm not subscribing to this. So then I canceled the appointment and then I went and I looked at what's the emotional suppression with cysts? What's the emotional suppression there? And would you believe the emotional suppression, well, I'm sure that you know, is anger. It's boiled. It's, there's a boil. There's a cyst. It's anger. And at the time, two huge cysts of my ovaries, what does that represent to me? This was back in 2011. I was angry that I didn't have a creative outlet giving birth, creation on the womb to my philosophy, to my ideas. I had nowhere to put it. Where am I going to put it? Where is it going to be received? I'm crazy. All these things, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I was angry about. And once I realized this, I also heard Dr. Northrup say, uh, she, she talked about how our womb is our creative center, right? This is where creation begins. And so what was happening is that I was holding that anger in my body. And that's how powerful anger is because yes. it, it can grow. It can grow. It's like a hot coal inside of you, right? So I, I, once I did the emotional clearing around that, then I shifted my beliefs. I changed my diet, right? Low carb, uh, alkaline diet. I did that. And then I got three spiritual healers, you know, different healers that, that worked on my body to, to make sure that energetically I felt okay. And I've never had another, uh, issue since. So, um, it's really, it's really interesting when we take the reins on healing ourselves and, you know, uh, taking our power back. And that's my, my passion is helping others claim their power, claim their authority. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doctors or having support. I'm not saying any of these things. It's all, these are all tools. It's just that this was my way of, you know, doing it. And I always check in with my body. And that is like, if I need this, then please let me know if I need to, if I need this. And the, the beautiful thing is, by trusting to really know if you're doing everything, you know, that you feel called to do, that you can trust that. I love that. I love checking in with your body because one of the things that um, we coach our women on is, 
if they still have a tumor or if they you know if they have cancer you know what is this cancer trying to tell you you know what what are you trying to tell me you know ask your body talk to your body because when you're still and you you know focus on that the message and the answers will come so you know that's that's so brilliant you know checking in with your body now you have a 21 day challenge that you're offering to our audience so what is that challenge about 21 days is perfect yes 21 days. so it, it's a challenge not to have not to have any negative talk for 21 days whoa so, not to have any negative talk for 21 days and that's every single day you know you what 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 is the what is the thought process that you have going on and how is it that you're talking to yourself how are you communicating to yourself because the way that you talk to yourself is the way that you know that that's that's a part is that are you talking to yourself in the most loving the most kind way the way that you would do your partner or your child or your loved one if you're not a bully only if you're not a bully because if you're if you're a passive aggressive bully then you're still using that anger and you're still projecting that out and when we turn it back to ourselves do we bully ourselves and what i want the audience to receive and practice and know is to have the most juicy relationship with yourself the most loving relationship to where the automatic talk <laughs> then comes back and says yes babe Oh, this is beautiful, babe. No matter what, if you're making a mistake, if you're not feeling particularly great, uh, whatever it is that your self-talk comes back and responds to you in a beautiful, loving way. That's what we want. And the challenge is, you know, we think between 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day, and 85% of those thoughts are negative. And then we've got everything else that we're doing on top of it. So I have a 21 day peace practice, a 21 day challenge that will support you to sit down for 10 minutes a day and um, you know, get, get intimate with the dialogue so that you can then practice being more kind, more loving, more harmonious to your own inner self because we know the most important relationship that you have on this planet is with you. That is so sweet. Now, where can they find this challenge? They can, they can email me at radio at Cornelia Stephanie, radio at Cornelia Stephanie, and I will be happy to send them a um, link to get it. I want one. <laughs> okay. Okay. You're going to love it. Oh, no, I know. Awesome. No, it's so great. I mean, that's been as much work as as we all do of, well speaking for me personally as much work as i've done over my lifetime you know it, it's so easy to default back to oh you're not good enough you didn't do enough you know work harder you know it's just it's just that voice sometimes that it's not always there but it's there's still a little remnant there that i'd like to squash <laughs> yeah you know you're doing such an amazing job because just you know on the um Transformation Talk Radio, where I have my podcast, we just recently had, um, you know, your name always comes up. So you help so many people. And I just want to, you know, acknowledge, oh, thank you. acknowledge that. And I'm, I'm just so grateful that I had the opportunity to meet you and that we, that we connected. And, you know, when we look at the, the cancer, uh, when we look at the cancer, I, 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 I didn't have cancer, but I've interviewed a lot of people that have cancer. And then I also had my mother who overcame breast cancer. And when, when my mom had breast cancer, I, again, being in, in, in this emotional work, and this was back in 2010, I, um, I looked at what's the emotional suppression again behind cancer. And there is a form of self-rejection that there, there's a part so that's why in order to balance that and make that right we have to infuse those cells with so much self-love with so much radical love that to not at any place reject the self because um you know because that's that's the part is where love has been absent now love is is put in that place and we have to become such radical self-love, unconditional self-love, unconditional self-love, you know, without condition, 
that you are infinitely worthy beyond measure. That's the truth. So the opposite, again, of not worthy, not feeling good enough is worthy. I am worthy. And that's part of the 21 day challenge is to really integrate that I am worthy into every choice that you make in the subconscious, because we know that's where the negativity um, lives because we were programmed to not be good enough. We were programmed and conditioned. That's how it was, how we are when we had to have to, you know, investigate those beliefs and look at those beliefs and, and, and see how does that feel for you today? Is that true for you today? And that's, that's the main thing is, you know, you're going to find that that's not true because you already know how amazing you are, how, how loving you are, because that's the truth. Yeah, we weren't born with those thoughts, right? They're just infused into us from our environment and all the experiences. Um, and then your book, tell us about your book. This is the book. It's, you can get this on Amazon, Peace, the Flip Side to Anger. What I have in the book, it's a really awesome book. It's loaded because it's like, it's like, a, it's like a workbook. In the back of the book, it also has a 21-day challenge in there because that 21 days is really helpful. And I talk about different stories about how, you know, how to release emotions, how to, when you get triggered, what to do and how to process. And, and I talk about my own spiritual journey, how to self heal and how to, you know, accept that you already have these abilities within yourself and that your life that you came here to live, you weren't born to fit into this old world. You were born to create a new one. And, you know, imagine now what your, what life is like, I mean, think about a person like me. I had self-hatred at my core. I had all these emotional core wounds. I had all this suicide at my soul. I was a drug addict back in the day. It's a miracle that I'm alive today. So if I can go from that place, from hating myself to, I mean, in grace today, it's like I live in a magical universe. And so if that's possible, and we know that's possible for many people that that are here. This is, imagine what we're going to do with our energy, what, what we're going to do with this amazing, beautiful planet for this short temporary time that we're here. What are we going to do with that energy when we don't have to uh, heal ourselves, when we don't have to, when we don't, what are we going to do? We're going to create, we're going to, we're going to build uh, legacies, make, make the world a better place for our children and our children's children and, you know, create a peace on earth. That's heaven on earth, peace on earth. That's, that's what I, what I, uh, that's my mission. I have uh, several podcasts on Transformation Talk Radio every Friday. Now we're, we're going from 12 to 2, and pretty soon it's going to be from 12 to 3, 12 p.m. Uh, yeah, to 3 p.m. Pacific time. And I bring on different people that are here that are changing the world, like one of my co-hosts is Dana Terrio, and that's how I met you. And uh, Dana is Dana's series is Handle the Lump, Heal Your Life. And you can see all the videos and all the shows and everything that I've done on YouTube. You can type in Cornelia Stephanie and please like and share the, the podcast because it really helps us to get the information out there. We just recently got 1,000 subscribers on the YouTube, which is huge. So, uh, yay, that's so awesome. And um, and then I have another podcast called Heaven on Earth, and that's where I bring in spiritual uh, messages and how how do we live heaven on earth and what does heaven on earth mean to you? So we have that. And then I have one more podcast that's called <laughs> Millionaire Imprint for Women, and that is really to help ladies uh, embrace their inner millionaire, whether you want to make $100,000 in your business in 2020. Uh, I'm using 2020 as an example, but it could be 2019 or 2018, but, uh, or you want to uh, embrace your inner millionaire and you want to move beyond that and you want to earn seven figures. It, it really empowers us when we, when we are doing what it is that we love to do and we have the financial wherewithal to support grassroots projects that we're passionate about because we can, we can give and we can, you know, be more active in the things that, uh, that, that we want to do when we have the funding to do it. And, you know, 
right? And then there's been so many women that, you know, that have given their power away and have still not cleared their uh, relationship with money, where this is all part of the millionaire imprint is to heal those karmic energies and about, you know, how money is not never there and the poverty and, and, and the conditioning that we were born into, in which I was too. And this is also another thing that I had to make right in my own life. And I created the Millionaire Imprint to show a conscious path of, uh, in my creation now, as I am a millionaire in the works. So it's an, it's an authentic path that I'm sharing and uh, showing that path because it's one thing when you know you come back later after you've earned your million bucks and then you come back and go ah this is how I became a millionaire but I'm doing it step by step authentically consciously and bringing in other entrepreneurs that that are working at the same thing so it's really to to live out loud to love out loud to laugh out loud and to have the prosperity and everything that the universe that that we're that we're absolutely deserving of that's awesome. You're a busy, busy lady. You're yes. doing some amazing work. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Cornelia. We'll make sure that we put all those links there on, uh, on when we um, publish the podcast so people can find your book and your website and your various podcasts. So thank you for your time. Thank and you. And I appreciate your message of hope that uh, you so lovingly share with everybody. I can tell you're very passionate about what you do. Thank you. So this is Dr. V sending you a big healing heart hug. Until next time, we will talk to you then. Bye for now. Hi, my name is Janet Hickox, and I want to tell you a little story about a story and how my friend Cornelia Stephanie helped me through to the other end of that story. I have gone from the dark of a story I was telling myself that wasn't true to the light of optimism to see my way out of where I was and to where I wanna go. And it all started with uh, her scheduling a session for me to help me reclaim my money or my financial empowerment. Up until that point, I had been telling the story that my business was dying, that my business was not successful anymore. And the more I tried to figure out what was going on, the worse I felt about it. And when I had to get ready to do the session with Cornelia, she asked me to go look at the numbers and where I was uh, through the year to date. And then also to come prepared with a number that I wanted to uh, raise my income to. Well, I was quite comfortable with that part, right? I knew where I wanted to be. Uh, what I wasn't comfortable with doing is going and looking up those numbers. But I made myself do it, even though I tried to backpedal my way out of the session um, she didn't know that, but I was going to try to get myself out of the session. And I looked up those numbers and it was incredible that I discovered through that process that my business wasn't dying. In fact, I was doing 12% better than I had the year before. So I was shocked. I was shocked literally at the power of the story that I had been telling for months. But more than that, I was shocked that I had allowed myself to get there. And, uh, Later in that day when I had my session with Cornelia, she pointed out some very obvious things like, how are you going to get where you want to go if you don't know where you want to go? How are you going to get there if you don't have the goals written out, if you don't have it uh, set up so that you know where you are and where you're going to go? Totally makes sense, right? If I, and I had been in business, uh, somebody else's business as a sales manager for years, and I, I was a national sales manager. I had awards for sales management. I had business awards because of numbers. And yet when it came to doing my own business, I totally forgot all that I'd ever learned. So by the time Cornelia working with me in just one session, got me to look deeper at the numbers and where did I want to go and actually, you know, claiming where I wanted to go. Um, I was filled with a sense of optimism and hope. Like you can't believe it was like, everything shifted for me. And I am so looking forward to our continued sessions to see how far I can really push myself to get where, I, where I've only dreamed of being, where I've never taken the dream and actually brought it into concrete existence. So thank you, Cornelia, 
for the work that you're doing out there. I appreciate it and I can't wait to see where I go from here.